What method of critical thinking do you use? Or do you even use a specific method for critical thinking? Today, instead of a logic-based culture, we have become an emotion-based culture subject to the influence of carefully crafted manipulation designed to target primal desires and emotions over our intellect. It has become apparent that many of us were taught what to think, but certainly not how to think. Consider, if you will, that by not using a specific methodology, you are vulnerable to whomever or whatever is able to make you act on pure emotion. Now, one method of critical thinking that I try to use is based on the liberal arts. You've probably heard the words liberal arts before, and some of you may even have a liberal arts degree. But in modern times, the phrase has been defined by humanities-related academic studies far removed from the practical esoteric definition. Many with such degrees cannot recite the classical subjects in order, if at all. Now, the word um, li liberal is taken from the Latin word for uh, libre, which ultimately means book. The word was held such importance as a concept that it was the same word used for both book and free. Knowledge was equated with freedom. You may also recognize perhaps the root word uh, libre in the motto for the United States Army Special Forces, de oppresso liber, which roughly translated means to free from oppression. So what are the liberal arts and why are they important to critical thinking? They are grammar, logic, rhetoric, arithmetic, geometry, music, and astronomy. And they must be stated in order in order to be used as a methodology. To facilitate this grouping, we refer to them by their esoteric Latin name, trivium quadrivium. The first three subjects represent the trivium, where the last four subjects represent the quadrivium. As we discuss the trivium, it's important to understand that each one of the three subjects within the group represents not only its corresponding definition as an academic field of study, but more importantly, each represents a critical step in a systematic process. Grammar, a study of language, a study of words, a study of the meaning within words. Its secondary definition, however, is the first step in the critical thinking process, and that is data input, gathering information without prejudice. In this step, we approach any new subject as if we don't know anything. We are simply collecting raw data without regard to judgment. This is purely an exercise of documentation and collection. Now, this is the who, the what, the when, the where of any subject or article of information but it is specifically not the why. You don't know why. The only thing you were doing at this stage of the game is collecting information. It is most definitely not why. It is simply who, what, when, and where. Our next subject is logic, a study of reasoning, a study of thought, a study of cognitive deduction. Its secondary definition is the second step of our critical thinking process. And that is the sorting of data, arrangement by class and type, apples and oranges, if you will, collation of information, the identification and the elimination of contradiction. In this step, we perform analysis on the data we collected in the first step. Often we find it necessary to return to information gathering based on revelations made during the sorting, arrangement, and collation. This is also the step where special emphasis must be made to the identification of contradiction. Put simply, a contradiction is either a lie or a misunderstanding. Now, this is the why based on information. Our third subject of the trivium is rhetoric. Rhetoric is a study of effective communication, a study of persuasive speech or writing, or of compositional technique. This is also our last step in the critical thinking process, and that is simply the expression of a logically based thesis, uh, concept, extrapolation, or abstract idea. It is only once we have collected data without emotional prejudice 
analyze said data with detail to type and class in contradiction, something we often see omitted in apples and oranges comparisons. You see, they're not the same thing that we are finally able to express a logical thesis to others or even ourselves. This is the how. And this is also specifically how to think, not necessarily what to think at all. Let's rehash just a little bit. Our steps are the trivium and for critical thinking are this. Grammar, the first step, gathering information, data input. It is important to gather information without prejudice. Our next set, step is to sort this information, the sorting of data, the arrangement of by class and by type, the collation of information and the identification and the elimination of contradiction. We have first gathered data. Now we are processing said data, putting things where they belong, arranging things as they are, which is easy to make very accurate comparisons. And it is only after that point that we are then able to uh, advance to the rhetoric stage where we are able to express a logically based thesis or theoretical, theoretical concept or any kind of extrapolation or abstract idea based off of our collection of information without prejudice, our analyzing of that data by class and type, and our expression of our new thesis, concept, or idea. So that ultimately is the trivium, that is critical thinking, that is how to think, not necessarily what to think. The same process can be used for self-education, for discovery, for a great number of things. Now, what is the quadrivium? Ultimately, the quadrivium is all about number. And as we approach the quadrivium, it is important to think uh, very much about the natural world around us and about the patterns that we see every day in nature. Our first subject of the quadrivium is arithmetic. And what is arithmetic? Arithmetic is simply the study of number. The next subject would be geometry. And geometry is simply the study of number in space. The next subject is music, harmony, or ratio. I've grouped all three of these together because music is not simply um, just a number in time, but it also has a lot to do with interval when we talk about chords, if we're talking about thirds, fifths, sevenths, things of that nature, which have more to do about the interval of the frequency as opposed to the study of number in time, which also is uh, music when you think of the, the time signature, if you will. And our last subject, of the uh, quadrivium is astronomy, which is the study of number in space and time. So we have the study of number, the study of number in space, we have the study of number in time, and then ultimately the study of number in space and time. What is this ultimately about? It is about pattern recognition in nature and in life. Everything is number, um, and most things on this planet are cyclical. Uh, they happen, everything from uh, the seasons or to other patterns, everything from music is a cyclical pattern of uh, notes that repeat or specific frequencies that repeat. The best thing about the, or the advantage or the reason for studying each subject within the quadrivium has a lot to do with understanding the natural world around you and pattern recognition uh, in nature and life. So that's pretty much trivium quadrivium how the liberal arts are used for critical thinking and the esoteric definition of trivium quadrivium and of the subjects of the liberal arts. Thanks a lot.